Joshua James and in this video I'm going to show you how to apply Floyd Warshall's algorithm to an undirected graph. Floyd Warshall's algorithm, just as a reminder, finds the shortest path between every pair of vertices in a graph. So it's known as an all pairs shortest pass algorithm. And it supports negative edge weights, but does not support negative weight cycles. So in our sample graph we have all positive edge weights. Here's our sample graph that has five vertices and six edges. And then we have an edge weight on each edge. So we're going to track our distances using these distance tables using the from vertex down the left column and the row across the top is going to be the two vertex. So we use the table to uh, track the distance from each vertex to every other vertex. And you can see that from any vertex to itself is always going to be zero. So this diagonal is always going to be zero. And this is D0, which is our starting state, D0, which means that it reflects all the direct connections between vertices. So A to B has an edge of 1, so we put a 1 in both from A to B and also from B to A. And you can see that A to C has an edge weight of 2, and so we put a 2 in from A to C and also from C to A because this is an undirected graph. So the table is basically going to mirror itself over this diagonal here. And then any pair of vertices that doesn't have a direct connection is going to have an infinity. In other words, it doesn't know of a way to get to that other vertex. So that's our initial state. We're going to do five iterations because we have five vertices. Each iteration we're going to consider paths through or via another vertex, starting with A. So in the first iteration, we'll say, well, can we find a shorter path by stopping at vertex A? And then the second iteration, we'll stop at vertex B, and so on. So here is our series of tables that we're going to have five tables. Like I said, we have five iterations because there are five vertices. And D1 corresponds to stopping at vertex A. D2 corresponds to stopping at vertex B. And this is our initial state that we just outlined on the previous slide. So the algorithm is going to pass through every single cell in this table one by one from left to right and it's going to compare can I find a shorter path by stopping at vertex A now I'm not going to go through these one by one and explain them but I'll, I, what I've done is highlighted the ones that actually change so we're going to hone in on those two and I'm going to show you how this works so we found a shorter path by stopping at A to get from vertex B to vertex C, and I've populated that here as 3. Previously it was 6. So we can see that B to C had an edge weight of 6. Now we found a path by stopping at A with just a weight of 3. So in other words we're going from B to A to C, and again that works in both directions. C to A to B also has a cost of 3. The way we compute this using the algorithm, B to C is equal to the minimum of the current B to C value we have in the previous table. So we look that up, that's 6. Or B to A plus A to C. So we look up B to A, which is 1, and A to C, which is 2. So we add those together, we get 3. So this 2 plus 1 is 3 is cheaper than 6. So we populate this with 3. And we do the same thing down here. C to B is 3. What we're going to do to find that, though, is we take C to B equals the minimum of C to B in the previous table. We look that up and it's 6, or C to A plus A to B. So C to A is 2, A to B is 1. We add those together, we get 3. So 3 is the minimum. So we populate this table with 3. And in our first iteration, those are the only two squares that change. So let's look at the second iteration. And the second iteration basically allows us to stop at vertex B. It says, hey, can I find a cheaper path to that vertex by stopping at node B? The answer to all of these is no, except for these two squares I highlighted. And again, we applied this minimum formula to every single cell. And in every single case, except for the two that I highlighted, the answer was, well, the previous square was the cheapest way. In these two, we found that the minimum of these two is this new path that stops at vertex B. For A to E, okay, and you look at the graph A to E, it's the minimum of the previous A to E or the previous A to B plus B to E. 
So we're basically stopping at B on the way to E to see if that gives us a cheaper route. So A to B gives us a, a cost of 1, and B to E gives us a cost of 4. We add those two together, we get a cost of 5. And the previous cost from A to E was infinity. So 5 is cheaper than infinity, so we change the square to 5. And the same thing down here, just the opposite direction. So in iteration 2, where we're considering stops at vertex B, we only made two changes to our graph. But we applied these, these similar formula to this to every cell in the graph. Those are just the only two that change. And again, always when applying this formula, what you're considering, the minimum, these are the weights of the previous iteration that we're using to compute the next iteration. In iteration 3, we're considering stops at vertex C. And in iteration 3, nothing changes. We actually don't find a cheaper path to anything by stopping at C along the way. Iteration 4, we're going to consider stops at vertex D. Well, since we actually don't even have a path to D from, from most of these vertices, stopping at D doesn't help us. So obviously, we're not gaining anything by stopping at D, and there are no changes in iteration 4. In iteration 5, there are a number of changes, because we get to consider paths through vertex E. And since before most of these vertices were not even able to reach vertex D, but by passing through vertex E, now they can reach D. That's why you see a lot of changes here. Now all of a sudden, you can reach vertex D from all these other vertices. Well, let's look at the formulas. What we're doing is applying this formula to the previous table. For A to D, we're going to take the minimum of A to D, which is infinity, or A to E plus E to D. A to E is 5, and E to D is 3, so 8. 8 is cheaper than infinity, so we change this to 8. And then B to D equals the minimum of B to D, which is infinity, or B to E plus E to D. B to E is 4, and E to D is 3. So that gives us a cost of 7 for B to D by passing through vertex E. So we change this to 7. And again, these are just the mirror images. So I'm not going to explain how we, we calculated these, but th this is the mirror image. This one corresponds to this cell. This 7 corresponds to this 7, and this 8 corresponds to this 8. So CD equals the min of CD, which is infinity, or CE plus ED. CE is 5, ED is 3, that gives us 8. So we populate 8 in this cell, and the formulas that I applied to these in row D here are these formulas, which are pretty obviously similar. But again, we apply this similar formula to every single cell in the table. I'm only highlighting the formulas where the cells that actually changed from the previous iteration. And that gives us our final solution. This is the shortest path from every vertex to every other vertex in the graph. I hope this video was helpful for you. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.